Few months ago, SAS boiler plates became popular. Now, I wanted to get one too, but when I saw how much they cost, I scratched that idea right away. If you clicked on this video, you might be in the same place as me. And I must tell you, you made the right choice, because I believe that developer tools should be free, especially if they don't create any cost to the seller. Just imagine if you had to pay for note packages, for example. It would be crazy, right? And a boilerplate is just a tool, so mine will always be open source. Now, the old boilerplate that I made has become a bit outdated now thanks to the new version of Svelte, so I thought it's time for a change. So here is another video about launching startups so good you'll question it. So first up, let's talk about the tech stack. The main idea here is to just follow what you already know. And if you want to follow my free template that I'll be publishing, well, here are a few words about my tech stack. In the old boilerplate, I use SvelteKit as the meta framework and Firebase as the database. Now, SvelteKit is going to stay because it was performing really well and I tried the new version with runes, so we'll be updating to Svelte 5 and call it a day. Now, as for the backend, here is going to be a change. Firebase made my code a bit messy because everything pretty much happens on the client and you're just protecting the database with rules. And yeah, that made me not cautious about writing code and I really had to do many security checks if I'm not going to get attacked and my data stolen. So that's one thing. And also you guys scared me of Google vendor lock-in and just those huge bills for Google Cloud. So I'm not going to go that way. We're changing to Superbase. Now you might think, oh, but you interact from the client too in Superbase using the Superbase JS library. Oh my God, you're so stupid. Actually, no, I'm also bringing Drizzle ORM to the tech stack so that I have a safe and great way to interact with our new Postgres database. I only need to enable raw level security and we're ready to go. So that's the biggest change. And one more thing that's changing is the UI library. I was using Daisy UI before and now you're going to hate me for this or love it for this. I don't really know, but I'm choosing ShadCN when I was playing with my uh, personal website and I was making the interface with V0. Yeah, I just got to try ShadCN and I really like the overall look and feel of it. So I thought, well, if there is a version for that in Svelte, why don't I try this? And it turns out I really like it. There's plenty of pre-built uh, blocks, as if they are called. So I'm changing to ShadCN and besides Daisy Y didn't give me that great feel that I was aiming for. So this is the final change. Recent is still staying for emails and Stripe is still staying for payments. So now let me quickly show you how the progress is going. Let me grab my laptop. So this is the beautiful homepage. I know it looks terrible right now, but I will add my own components over time and they will be available in the public repo. For now, what you can do is log in either with uh, Google or with a magic link. It took me so long to do this. In Firebase, it was just like that. But yeah, I got it to work and we can log in. And I also started implementing Stripe, but I'm not finally ready with it for now. Uh, when this video goes out, yeah, it probably will be ready. Just check out the uh, repo in the description. So here is a basic pricing page. And yeah, I still need to implement how to uh, actually do the checkout. I also got a profile page working. You can modify your first name and last name and you can also uh, log out. So that's it for now, but there will be plenty more like recent integration and Stripe integration, it's all coming. Now get ready for the quickest tutorial ever. Open up your terminal, go to your desired folder, git clone, paste the link, boom, done. npm install and you're ready to go. But now you need to know how do you turn this powerhouse of a code base into something actually profitable? 
I'm not an expert on this, my first SaaS hasn't made a dollar yet, but still, I think I've learned quite a few things uh, from this one fail only that I want to share with you. So for the idea, you need to go small or go big. There is no success in between, absolutely no success. So as an example with Scriptwriter, it solves only half of the problem. It's just a tool to improve your script writing and it just helps you do the job but it doesn't do the whole job for you. You still need to put your own time into this. And it would have been much better if I made a free tool that would, for example, only analyze your script and provide you with some actionable tips to improve it. Or if this was just a part of a whole big platform for YouTubers and it would have much more value that way because it would be solving a much bigger problem. As for the market gap, you need to be harsh on yourself. I wasn't and look what happened, zero results. So you need to ask yourself a few questions every time you got a new idea in your head. Are there any competitors? No, it's trash. Will this thing be useful to at least one person you know apart from you? Is this just a nice to have product, a vitamin? or you need it to function, a painkiller? Or do you know the problem you're fixing well? If you're unsure about any of these questions, then this idea should probably be thrown in the bin. And there's plenty of more questions you need to ask yourself. So just try to break this idea down every time you have a new one. And this way you won't be failing that much and even if you do, your ideas will have much greater potential. All that I've just said is probably 95% of all the people on the internet say, but sometimes you just need to hear it a hundred times before you finally understand it. And I myself make these mistakes too. And you know, I make these videos telling you how my startup went and yeah, I show you empty graphs, zero users, zero dollars in the bank. But still, it's a journey and we all learn from it. So, you know, just face that 95% of your ideas are going to be trash and go on with life and try to finally get that one that will get you going. Now, you might also be watching this video and you might not even have an idea for a startup yet. You just clicked it because, ooh, free boilerplate, wow. And if that's the case, watch this video right here next to learn about five cool startup ideas you can try in 2025.